so if we if you took a slightly longer look, um, so a phase two A now, phase two B, phase three. Uh, we're doing the phase one two A. That's yeah. just finishing up. Yeah. And we'll be beginning soon, uh, probably August, uh, September, yeah. our phase two. Right. Um, and then, so when do you think you'd get into phase three? I, I mean, is that part, something that you can speculate on? You know, if there's one thing I've learned, <laughs> trying to predict what the FDA wants to do in their timeline is very tough. And it's also okay. foolhardy. Um, you okay. know, we, we've done a lot and we do work with regulatory experts and very closely with the FDA. If, if, um, uh, if everything goes um, as we expect it to go from the norm of FDA behavior and application processes and policies and deadlines, then we should be uh, in the third or fourth quarter of this year beginning our metabolism clinical trial. In one year thereafter, we'll hit an interim data, which will be a tremendous amount of irrefutable, double-blinded, randomized human data. Um, that's about you know, a year and um, a few months from now. Uh, one year after that, the clinical trial will finish in its entirety, and um, we will have a complete uh, phase two data set. You know, I'm exploring other things now. We may actually run multiple phase two clinical trials, some of which are faster than others, in multiple manifestations of immune-mediated aging. And um, we have a lot to choose from. You know, we have beautiful, beautiful preclinical data on muscle and metabolism. Both of those are published, but we also have excellent uh, data on neuroinflammation, on um, arterial stiffness and wound healing and the adaptive immune response. So there are several other areas that this could go into in a, uh, you know, it's expensive to run these human mm -hmm. clinical trials, but I'm pleased to say that the interest is phenomenal. Uh, mm -hmm. The marketplace right now and the economy is um, very good. Uh, let's hope it stays that way. But for the time being, um, it does seem to be a very fundable story that's getting a lot of interest. So I may be able to raise the capital in order to try this in multiple um, human degradations rather than just simply muscle atrophy and metabolism. Right. Do, do you see kind of the end point? as it being systemically, so rather than fixing muscle atrophy and sarcopenia, it's like systemically being able to, I don't know, I don't want to use rejuvenate, but to, to make more healthy yeah. the whole human. That's my intent. You know, I, I uh, my team and I at Immunis are intent on a prophylactic approach. Really, you know, we're, we're meaning this to be used in a prophylactic manner so that you keep your immune system strong so that you don't get these immune mediated de declines. You know, I started off our, our uh, discussion by saying I was initially drawn into this by trying to help cancer patients not get cancer mm. because there's no cancer patient that had cancer that wasn't immune suppressed. Like they, immune dysregulation is necessary for cancer to occur. You know, I started out by really with a team looking at how do we keep the immune system healthy? And then it became very apparent that if you keep the immune system healthy, you stave off a whole lot of death and demise in a lot of different ways. You're going to not die of some bugs that otherwise would have killed you. You're going to not get cancer. You're not going to generate allergies and just tie up your immune system. You know, it's a there's a bunch of things, arterial stiffness, neuroinflammation, adaptive immune response, muscle, metabolism, all of those things are very fundamental to your quality of life. And they also have downstream effects. Think about your ability to be motile and functional and competent from a, a mechanistic, a motor point of view. If you're 85 and you can walk up and down stairs and walk around the block and cook yourself food and you know take care of your own body, that your quality of life is extraordinarily bettered. So it's really my goal you know, to develop a prophylactic where we can we can see a physiological function that's that's causing um, in this very dirty society that we live in and taxing immune systems right, left, and center. If we can better our immune system in order to keep ourselves a little more resilient, keep ourselves stronger, keep our metabolism higher, and that combined with a lot of behavioral adjustment on on the part of a a populace that is becoming much more educated now. Um, I think we've got a good shot of um, really improving quality of life in a very large way to a very, very large percentage of the population. 
Right. So, so when you get to a certain age, I don't know, 60 or 70, then you would start like taking this, uh, as you say, prophylactically like, um, ahead yeah, of time. I would think so. It's certainly, you know, in human clinical trials, you're not allowed to work on healthy normals. You have right. to work yeah. on worst <laughs> off of the worst of any particular thing. You need a, you need an indication. So, you know, we're tackling people with trouble, right? They're, yeah. they can't, they can't can't locomote normally because they're older and they have knee osteoarthritis. Um, this is fantastic for autoimmunity, right? This is yeah. fantastic for in any type of immune suppressed environment, autoimmune environment, um, immune dysregulation, but for a healthy, normal, goodness, keep my immune system strong. Mm. There's a lot of ways you can do it right now, but most of us don't do that. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you know, we need to work in keeping our immune system strong. And as you get older, there's there's no amount of work that'll keep it strong. You need some help. And I, I think Immuno could be the help.